Now, I could keep going, I didn't hit failure, but I'm feeling it light up, I'm feeling it burn. I know this looks ridiculous, and if you've ever seen one of these at a yard sale, which is probably where you've seen them, you think that some stupid gimmick from the 80s or the 90s, some aerobic shape type thing that's not gonna work, uh, like a shake weight or something else, but I went out of my way to make sure I could pick this up because believe it or not, these are awesome. This is called the Health Rider. I don't know when it first came out. I found conflicting stuff online, but uh, I remember seeing commercials for these back in the 90s. So at least the 90s, they're probably 30 plus years old. As it is, this is how you'd set it up. You can sit on this seat and right away, this seat can be adjusted forward or back for different heights. And that actually comes into how useful it is in a minute. But the basic idea with this machine is that you grab this the same way you would a, a lat pull down bar or maybe you're doing a machine row and this bar it swivels for one so it, it doesn't impinge your movement or, or put pressure on the joints or anything but it is just like an old school full width lat pull down bar from a commercial gym it is super wide it curves at the ends um, it's it's very heavy duty very strong and you just grab wherever's comfortable for you. Obviously, as you grab narrower or wider, it's gonna kind of change the dominant muscles being worked. You can grab overhand or underhand, and it even has grip padding here on the shaft. So just like you could get on a machine and do the one-armed row or a dumbbell row, you can actually just grab this right in the middle and do your rows with this machine. So the idea is that you put your feet here on these, I guess they're kind of like pedals, foot rests, and you pull towards you, just like you're doing a row. Now, the cool thing about this is that I can leave my legs completely relaxed and intentionally only pull with my arms and my back and my rear delts. So I'm just doing a row, uh, a row movement. So it's, it's really isolating the pull muscles. But what's cool is that if you start getting to the point where you're getting close to failure, you can actually give yourself forced reps because if you hit that point where you can't quite finish it, all you do is put a little bit of pressure with your legs. Just extend the legs a little bit, just enough to help you get it the rest of the way and it gives you that forced rep. Now, if you get to the point where you've lost enough weight or you've gained enough strength that that's no longer difficult, because this seat moves back, you can simply shift further back on the seat. Now you have to lean farther forward to grab the handle, but because you're further back on the seat, now, even at the very top of the mo movement, your, your body weight, your center of gravity is further behind the pivot point. So it, it's still keeping more pressure. The closer you get to getting on top of the rotation, the point of rotation, the less effective weight you're gonna feel. So by simply scooting further up the seat, you're scooting yourself further back, adjusting the weight back and keeping more pressure on the muscles. But past that, Another way that immediately makes things more difficult is instead of putting your feet here on these foot, uh, these pedals, these foot pads, you shift your feet up to here. That means that even when you're not pushing with your legs, typically the weight of your legs and the natural movement of your body will put some, some pressure on these pedals, whether you mean to or not. And that actually assists you in pulling the weight. It helps push you in line. So by shifting your feet forward here, it's unbelievable how much just shifting your feet forward and, and taking them out of the equation so that it's just dead weight on the machine and it's not gonna even incidentally help at all. Immediately, it requires so much more effort. Now, if that still gets to the point where that's too easy, it comes with this little stepper. You've seen with my old Total Gym videos, a very common thing you do is you you stick the total gym up on a ledge. If you go all the way to the, the top level and it's just not heavy enough and you have no way to add additional weight or maybe you've added additional weight but you've maxed out the machine's capacity, the easiest way to immediately make the total gym harder is just to artificially raise the elevation by setting the total gym up on blocks. This was purpose built for that. It has this, it comes with it. As a matter of fact, because of the size and the width, the total gym could also sit on that 
little block. But this is comes from the factory and pretty easy. You just lift the machine and set it right in there. And again, now the whole thing is shifted back. So it's even more weight behind that point of rotation. You never approach in line the same way. So I put my feet back down on these original pads and it's more difficult. I put them up here. It's a lot more difficult. Now again, if it still gets to the point where that's too easy, this comes with an optional weight attachment where basically it hangs, uh, a, I guess it'd be like a weight tree. It's basically a bar, a swivel, a swiveling bar that clips to the bottom of the seat here, this, uh, the frame, and you can add plate weights. So again, it's just adding more weight, making this even more difficult. You could also obviously wrap resistance bands from the frame here to the frame down here. So the higher you get, which resistance bands actually work really, really well for this type of setup, because with this, again, the higher you get and the more in line you get with, with this point of rotation, the easier it gets. But of course, if you have resistance bands set up, then that means the higher you get, the more you're stretching the band and the more difficult it gets. So what it ends up doing is those, those two opposing uh, weight curbs, uh, resistance curbs, end up canceling each other out and you get a nice, full, consistent resistance on the machine. So whether it's plate weight or resistance bands or both, it becomes very, very effective. Now, obviously you can also uh, do other things to make it more difficult. Like for example, if you decide that you wanna keep the, the weight pulled up high, higher to your body, your elbows are flared up and you're working more of the upper back muscles, you can do that. So obviously I just lean my body more forward, keep my elbows high and pull towards my upper chest and it's very good. But if I specifically want to do like a low row, like you do on a machine, I'm pulling down towards my hips and activating much more of my lats, keeping my elbows tucked in. This adjusts down. As it sits down, it does two different things. Now, typically when you have your elbows flared up and you're pulling high, you can't pull as much weight. Those are smaller muscles in the upper back. You're at a mechanical disadvantage. You just can't pull as much weight. Also, because the handle is up higher, you actually have a longer lever arm. So with that longer lever arm, that longer moment arm, inherently you have a mechanical advantage of the machine and it makes it easier to pull. So in this position where the muscles are naturally weaker, you actually have more of a mechanical advantage and the weight is okay, it feels good. When you drop your elbows down and you're pulling low into your hips and you're activating those big, large lat muscles, you have a lot more power and you're at a lot more of a mechanical advantage. Well, because you've lowered the handle down, it's a much shorter lever arm, a much shorter moment arm, and you are at less of a mechanical advantage, so it makes it more difficult. So even with the exact same setup and the exact same weight being used, simply because the handle is lower, it makes it more difficult, which is what you need for these larger, stronger muscles. So I lower the handle, and I could do, let's say an underhand grip, like a, like a Dorian row. And I actually wanna make this really difficult. So I put my feet up here. I make sure I'm scooted nice and far back. And I pull it tight towards my hips. I'm trying to get my elbows to touch my hips. Like that. And I actually really feel the resistance. I'm not thinking about curling my biceps. I'm thinking about pulling my elbows into my hips. So I can get a nice long stretch, really stretch the lats out and then only think about pushing my elbows back and trying to tuck my elbows into my hips. And that feels amazing on the lats. It actually activates them really, really well. Now, if all that again gets to the point where, let's say you've, you don't have plate weights or you don't have the attachment, or maybe you've already added the plate weights and you've already used your resistance band and you've done everything, it's, it's, it's lifted up and it's still getting a little too easy. You want more resistance. The next thing is you can actually remove this entire handle like that. And you set it in this bone right here. Now this inherently, again, because of where it's pulling from, because of the, the insertion point on the machine, this is now pulling here at the wheel instead of up close here where it has linkage to give you a mechanical advantage. This essentially, by placing it further back, has less linkage, less of a lever arm, less total distance between the pivot point, 
you're at a mechanical disadvantage and it immediately becomes dramatically harder. So if I were to put my feet back up here, it immediately would feel way, way, way more difficult. So I'm actually gonna put my feet back on this lower portion, underhand grip. I tuck in. Now, as you notice, because this is closer to me, it sets up higher. So when I tucked in, it was actually the midway point. Instead of being high, instead of being really low, this was a midway point. And I think, well, I really want to keep it low. Just tuck it in more. Lower the handle. Push these pins, lower the handle. Now, I just picked this up. I've only used it a couple times. I have not done anything to it yet. I have not oiled it. I've not cleaned off some of this surface oxidation because it was sitting in a spare room at this person's house for who knows how many years. So if this is uh, making some squeaking or it's a little rough to adjust, I apologize. I haven't, I haven't done any maintenance to it yet. This is as I found it. But by lowering this handle down to whatever height that I need, I can get that, that desired lower point. That's still too high, I can lower the handle down more and more. This shaft goes all the way down to the wheel. So theoretically, I could drop this handle all the way down to where this sleeve is touching up against the grip material here. Now, I need some WD-40. I'll put it back in, the, back in the front position, keep it nice and high. This, again, can be used for so many different things. You can keep the weight light and you can do more of like uh, aerobic type movements. You're doing high reps, lightweight. It's more about just moving the body, lots and lots of reps, kind of like a, its own form of cardio, like a rowing machine. I could keep my feet here. And the whole thing I want to do is I just want to push with my legs and pull with my arms at the same time. So it's kind of a full body thing. And I know this looks like the old nineties commercial. You think that looks so stupid. It's not doing anything. If you think of this as cardio and you do it like cardio, because when you're, when you're running, for example, if someone was demonstrating this new crazy exercise called running, you would never laugh it off and say, look how easy that is. They can smile and they're breathing okay. Well, yeah, because they're doing a light demonstrative run. They're running 10 steps at a slow pace just to show you what running is. Of course, it's not difficult. It's not weight training. It's cardio. So with this, it's the same thing. When you have the resistance set low and you're implementing your legs and your arms at the same time, you're doing a few reps to demonstrate, of course, it looks easy. It is easy. But as you continue doing it, like cardio, say, I'm going to continue doing this, move this, this motion over and over again for 10 minutes straight without stopping, 20 minutes straight, 30 minutes straight, like cardio, just like you do on a bike, just like you do on a rowing machine, it will light you up. Your lungs are going to be burning. The muscles are going to be burning. It's going to suck because it is effective full body cardio. It's, it's actually really, really effective. But again, by adjusting the machine, setting it up, adding weights, adding resistance bands, anything else, this can be used for essentially weight training. It's, it's could be used in place of a lat pull down or, or, or a rowing machine. Now, of course, a lat pull down is not going to be done as effectively. You need to kind of modify the machine more. You need to intentionally adjust the seat back, sit further back and, and really make your body in line face this so that you're effectively pulling. If I lay down on my knees, I'm pulling at a, what is effectively a downward motion. This becomes similar to a lat pull down. But of course, if I shift forward on the machine, lower the handle down, lean back, I'm now rowing. Because again, even on machine, the only difference between a lat pull down or a row or one type of row versus another type of row, it all just has to do with body positioning. The position of your body is going to dictate which muscles are being used. So it really is that simple. On a machine, you either stay more upright or you lean back more. The elbows are flared more or they're tucked in more. You have an overhand grip or you have an underhand grip. You, you modify your position and the direction in which you're pulling in order to activate different muscles. You can do the same thing with this. So as, as much of a gimmick as this thing looks like, these are actually very, very, very effective, especially as you start again, adding modifications. I actually used this machine. The very first day I got it was the day I was doing my, my pull workout. So I was using my lat pull down machine over there. I was doing rear delt flies on this machine here. I was doing uh, bicep curls, all this stuff. And instead of doing machine rows, 
where I lower the cable and I'm doing um, rows on the machine, I started using this instead. And again, by adjusting it the way I needed to, I ended up hitting failure. I was able to push myself to actual momentary muscular failure on this 90s gimmick. These things are awesome. Everything for the machine itself, all the components are either stainless steel or they're chrome plated or they're uh, regular mild steel. Everything has nice thick walls to it. I mean, this is old school quality when something that was even meant for home use would last 30 plus years. And if you Google this, if you look at people who have actually owned these things, they bought it originally in the 90s and they've been using it consistently for 30 years. Everybody says, yeah, I've used it regularly for 25, 30 years. Still works great. Never had to replace anything. Because really there's not a lot to replace. There's no motors. There's no belts. There's no chains. There's no cables. It's, uh, it's a frame with pivot points. It is inherently by design pretty bulletproof. This isn't going to replace an entire gym. And if we're comparing it to the Total Gym, for example, the Total Gym is more versatile. You can do more stuff with something like a Total Gym, which is right behind me. And I'll typically set it up right in front of my bike here. But uh, these, this is not like the Thigh Master. It's not like the Shake Weight. This is not one of those Total Gimmicks that does nothing. You can do the same rowing motion like you do on a rowing machine for cardio, a very, very similar type of rowing motion. And you can, you can add resistance, bands, weights, whatever. And you can do your reps and get your heart rate up and move quickly and just do that for 10, 15 minutes. But it's gonna take up dramatically less space than one of these big full length rowing machines. And it's gonna cost way less. It's also gonna be more reliable. Rowing machines have way more parts, way more moving parts, way more things that need maintenance and need being replaced. This has none of that. And if, if you don't want to use it for just cardio, if you want to do it for, if you want to use it for, like I said, a good heavy pull movements, you want to work your back, you want to work your rear delts, you want to work your biceps, you can set this machine up to add a lot of resistance and be very, very challenging and give you an actual good heavy strength training workout on this machine. Now it's not perfect. Obviously there are limitations, but Considering how easy these are to find and considering how unbelievably cheap they are or free. I'm going to, I'm going to get back to my workout. And other than that, thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.